this is another exciting video and this particular video is packed with so much information and i really advise you to actually pay attention and stick to the end if you want to understand every process and step that i have taken to making this top and for those that are interested in making the complete outfit i'll go ahead and provide all the links that you'll be needing on the description box below so you can just click on the links and then be able to create this two piece for yourself thank you for joining me i love you so much and let's just get into the video now for the complete outfit i used three yards of ankara and if you're using crepe just get two and a half or three yards and you're good to go and also the first option for this video i created a pattern where i used my old clothes to get the pattern that i'm going to be using to create this top but that is not the only way we're going to be creating this top okay this video here is a two different method video where i will go ahead and also mark my body measurements on the fabric for those people that don't want to use the option one which is the old clothes pattern you have the second option we're going to be marking our body measurements on the fabric and also i want to compare my old clothes pattern with the body measurements we're going to be marking on the fabric so that anybody that is using any of the option will not feel left out will not feel like they are going to get a different result from what i'm getting so i'm going to be comparing the old clothes pattern and the body measurements we're going to be marking on the fabric okay so you know that you always arrive at the same result and we're going to be sewing the top together on this video we're going to also create the sleeve pattern and cut everything on the fabric like this video is packed with information like i said i've been i've been thinking i want you to be happier i want you to be now the first information i want you to know is folding now what is folding folding is knowing the width and the length of the fabric that you need to cut out before you start marking your measurements so before you start marking your measurement on a particular fabric you need to know how wide and how long the fabric needs to be before you start marking the measurements and how do you know how wide your fabric needs to be first of all the width is going to be the biggest part of the body measurement that you're going to be working with you divide that measurement by four and add three to four inches to that and that is going to be the width of your fabric okay and for the length determine how long you want your top to be and just add three to four inches to the uh, measurements and you're good okay so that is how you fold out your fabric before we start marking body measurements now the first step for those that are going to be marking the body measurements and not using their pattern let's go ahead and fold our fabric into two okay so i have my fabric here and i'm going to be folding this in from the wrong side we're going to be marking all the body measurements on the wrong side of the fabric so now i'm going to be confirming my own folding and i'm going to um, find out the width the width i'm working with is my round boss divided by four plus four inches allowance remember i told you what folding is and that is going to determine the kind of fabric you're going to cut out first before you start marking your measurements okay so i just confirmed mine and it is accurate i'm just going to go ahead and press this down so it lays flat and we're going to start marking the body measurements on the fabric okay so please let me know if you understand to this point now the first thing i need to do is rule out a starting line and this is important because when you have a guideline before you start marking your measurements everything you mark is going to be accurate okay so this is going to help the accuracy of you marking your measurements and i'm just trying to confirm that my starting line is one inch from the beginning to the end of the fabric now the next step is to divide my shoulder by two and mark that on the starting line so just go ahead and do this with me if you're using the second option which is marking out the body measurement divide your shoulder measurement by two and mark this in from the close edge of the fabric okay from the center front of your fabric where you have the close edge mark your shoulder measurement divided by two on that point and once you have that the next thing you need to do is come down by one inch for your slope your shoulder is never straight okay so you need to mark one inch down for the slope 
the next thing i'm going to do is mark my neck width still on that starting line so i'm going to place my tip and mark three inches or 3.5 inches in from that uh, starting line and you see where my tape is sitting from the close edge in i'm going in by 3.5 and that is my neck width i'll connect my neck width to the slope just like this okay see how i'm doing this if you're following the second option just watch everything i'm doing carefully okay so you don't miss out on any parts the next thing i'm going to do is divide my round armhole by two and i'll mark this down from the slope my round armhole is 16 16 divided by 2 gives you 8 inches and i'll mark 8 inches down from the slope like this so before i connect this to this i'm going to confirm that i have the same width i have on my shoulder here i'll confirm that it is the same okay so what i have here i'm going to confirm that it is the same thing i have on my armhole okay so i have 7.5 here or confirm if i have 7.5 here okay so and you see i was a little bit off i'll just adjust it back to 7.5 and then i'll connect to the straight line all step by step okay so just stick with me and pay attention now the next thing i'm going to be doing is marking my top length and the length i'll be using for my top is 17 inches so go ahead and determine how long you want your top to be and then mark that down from the starting line okay make sure you place your tape from the starting line and you mark your top length not from the slope from the starting line So if you don't want your top to be cropped, just make sure it is longer than 17 inches, okay? Now the next thing I'm going to do is divide my round bust by 4 and I'll mark that down on the armhole line, okay? So my round bust is 36 divided by 4 gives you 9 inches and I'm marking that measurement on my, you see, I'm marking it on my armhole line. Okay, that is very simple. Um, I'm just showing you how you can divide your round bust with your tape without a calculator okay so you have to fold your tape into four from the measurement you have for your round boss my round boss is 36 and you can see i'm placing the top edge of my tape on the 36 see 36 and i'm going to fold this into two and then fold again into two to get four part of my tape and that is going to give me the actual measurement for my round boss okay so you don't need necessarily need a calculator before you can be able to break down your measurement you can do this way this is the manual way for you to divide your measurement using your tape okay so just make sure that your um zero point or your starting point of your tape is sitting on your bust measurement and then or whatever measurement you're breaking down and then you fold your tape into four if you're dividing by four you fold your tape into four and you're going to get the um point or the number that you need to use to mark down on your fabric okay so I marked 9 inches and now I'm going to be marking 1.5 inch as the allowance for this dress. Now why I'm marking 1.5 is 1 inch is the ease and half inch is the sewing allowance. So please do that. And I'll move over to the length of my top and I'm just going to mark down my round bust divided by 4 and I will not add any allowance to this, okay? So the 9 inches I marked on the armhole, that is what I'll just mark on the length. And then I'll connect this to the armhole like this. Very simple. Like this is the simplest top to make. And if you're using the second method, which is marking the body measurement, it is really simple. But then if you have your pattern drafted already, <laughs> that one too is very simple. So just for those people that have their pattern, please and please just hold on. We're going to be sewing this together, both this first option and the second option. We're going to be sewing everything together okay all step by step now what i'm doing is marking the middle points on my armhole and on the middle points i went in by 0 0.5 and i'll use my curve ruler to connect and i have successfully created my armhole curve on the armhole okay so after connecting this to my um, bust measurement i'm connecting the uh, other 0 0.5 to the slope like this and that is it, we're done. 
now i'm going to be marking the neck depth for this top and i'll be marking the back neck depth on this then i'll create the front later so the back neck depth i'll be using is one inch and you can see where i'm placing my tape i'm just marking one inch down from the starting line on this point here and i'll use my covula and connect this to the neck um, width so you always connect your neck depth to your neck weight and you're good now we're going to be adding our sewing allowance again on this because we're marking this directly on the fabric so we need all the allowances so that when we sew this we don't run out of fabric like we don't run short and then this fabric is not too tight on us okay the altitude does not become too tight let's go ahead and mark 0.5 inch allowance on all points that's the neckline the shoulder the armhole and if you also want to still add half an inch on the side or add one inch on the length just do that okay so the more allowances you add the more you are safe okay it is better for your fabric or your outfit to be bigger than for it to be lesser so if it is bigger you can adjust and get the actual fit that you want but if it is lesser you cannot do anything so just add more allowances and then when you try it on and you feel like it is too big you can always adjust i was saying something about those people that have their pattern ready just hold on when we are done cutting for the body measurements we're marking we're going to be sewing everything together and i'm going to be explaining all the process and all the steps okay so nobody is left out trust me so now let's create the front piece of this top because we just finished creating the back for the front piece we're just going to fold our fabric again into two okay just fold your fabric into two this time around you don't even need to do the folding just fold your fabric into two and then iron this down so it lays flat and place your back piece on this fabric okay and that is it we are done with the front piece we're just going to adjust the neckline and we are done so my fabric is folded into two I'm just going to bring my back piece and place this on the fabric like this so this is the back i'm just going to place it like this on the fabric making sure that the close edges sit together like this okay you see the close edges sit together and i will trace okay i'm tracing the shoulder i'll trace the armhole i'll trace the side i'll trace the length you're tracing practically every part of this um back piece on the fabric okay you're tracing every part and the only difference um, from the back piece and the front piece is going to be the neck depth and that is it so i'll make sure that i trace out the shoulder clearly because i'll be using that to create my front neck depth and for the front neck depth i'm just going to mark two inches down so see what i'm doing i'm placing my tape on the back piece and i'm marking two inches down i'll make sure that that chalk line um identify or it is clear on the other fabric below okay so see I'll just make sure that my chalk gets to the other fabric below or underneath my back piece and then i'll take out my back piece okay so i'm just making sure that the chalk is showing here the two inches down on the back is showing here and i'll just connect so this is the high shoulder here and i'll use my covula and connect this and now i have my front piece of the top so please let me know in the comment section if you found it very difficult to do this particular process let me know so i can you know put you through again but apart from that i'm just going to go ahead and cut out my front piece and we're going to move to the next step so this is the front and the back piece and like i said we are going to be comparing what we just finished marking and cutting out with the pattern that we created from the old clothes okay so that everybody knows that they are not missing out on anything and that we're all going to be arriving at the same result okay so let's go ahead and compare our pattern with the measurements so this is my front and my back and this is my front from the old clothes so see front pattern from old clothes i'll place it on my front piece okay this is the front piece and the pattern from the old clothes and this is my back pattern from the old clothes that we created okay and i'll place it on the back piece now let's compare now you can see that every part of this um top and the pattern is the same okay the fabric and the pattern is the same and the only difference that i can spot right now is that the shoulder has more allowance on the piece of the fabric the shoulder has more allowance than the pattern 
and for that if you're cutting your pattern on the fabric just make sure you add like half an inch on the shoulder and you're done but apart from that every other thing looks the same and we're good so let's go ahead and place this pattern on the fabric and cut so i want to show those people that created the pattern how to cut their um pattern okay so this is the front pattern from the old clothes and this is my fabric you can see i have folded my fabric into two and i have closed edge here so i'm just going to place my pattern on the closed edge making sure i have allowances on the top of the pattern and on the base and then i'll pin this down so this is how you practically cut out your pattern okay make sure you fold your fabric into two and then all you have to do when you fold your fabric into two is just you can add more allowances on the pattern or like on the fabric when you're cutting your pattern you can add allowances on the side on the shoulder on the neckline it is up to you but it is always advisable to add allowance because i like i said it is better for the top to be bigger than smaller okay so you see i place my pattern on the fabric a folded fabric and i just cut it out and this is my front piece from the pattern now repeat the same thing for your back pattern that you've created from that old clothes and you will have two pieces like this okay now hope i have satisfied everybody the people using the first option and the second option and if i have satisfied you please go ahead and like this video okay and help me share i will appreciate that now the next thing we're going to do is sew these pieces together and how do we do this now this is for both the first option and the second option place your front piece or your back piece and sew this by half an inch or sew this by the allowances you've left for your sewing allowance okay so if you left half an inch sewing allowance sew that in if you left one inch sewing allowance sew that in okay so whatever allowance you left while cutting out on the fabric just sew that in okay and that is what i'm doing right now and on the shoulder to sew the allowance you left for your sewing allowance that sewing allowance you left sew that in on your shoulder okay and once you're done um the next thing i actually did was i went ahead to try this on first i wanted to make sure that the neckline was big enough to pass through my head before i finished the neckline and and you can see here i was struggling to pass this through my head and for this reason i'm going to be cutting out half an inch around the neckline so that it is more open okay so please make sure you try this on before you go ahead to finish the neckline okay it will take nothing from you to just take like a few minutes to try this on and if you find out that you're having the same problem it is not passing through your neck just go ahead and do the same process with me take off 0.5 inch around the neckline just as i am doing right now okay and then we're going to finish up the neckline together Um, after taking off the 0.5 inch round the neckline i decided to try this again and voila it just went through my head like that and now i'm gonna finish up my neckline now finishing up neckline has like you, there are different ways you can finish up your neckline you can use bias you can create a facing or you can use lining okay so there are different methods in which you can finish up your neckline but for me i'm just going to be doing the easiest part which is using the bias and this is a bias okay so this is the bias i'll be using i'm using the black bias and this is what a bias looks like it has folded edges um 0.25 folded edges like this and that is what i'm going to use to finish up my neckline now how to finish up your neckline using the bias is from the right side of your fabric that's the good side you place 0.5 inch on the right side and sew it first before you turn it to the wrong side and then top stitch okay so what i'm doing right now is sewing on the right side of my fabric that's the good side and i'm sewing this bias by the 0.5 inch that was folded in the bias okay Spirits. I wanna see you smile, but know that means I'll have 
and once i'm done sewing this from the right side i'm going to cut out the excess bias remaining i'll just cut it off so i can fold the other side of the bias into the wrong side and then top stitch so this is what i mean or this is what i meant okay so i'm just going to fold it in like this okay and now i'll stitch so it is really simple you sew from the right side and then you fold it into the wrong side and stitch and now you're done with your neckline that is if you're using the bias method if you're not using the bias method probably you're using the facing or the lining you try to line your top there are there are also good ways to finish your top okay all those ones are going to give you like the cleanest um, finishing but then again if you're a beginner i'll advise you to actually start off with using the bias and then we're all going to move together and learn how to create facing for our top or skirt and also learn how to use lining to finish up whatever we are creating okay so we are in this to get that this sewing journey bar now me and you so see my result okay this is the result i got after finishing my neckline with the bias and we're going to move into the last but not the least stage which is creating the sleeves For those that are marked body measurement on the fabric, we're going to be creating a sleeve pattern together, okay? And I'll show you what you need to do to create your sleeve pattern. And then we're going to be moving on to the next stage, which is cutting the sleeve pattern on the fabric to get our A-line sleeves. Remember, this top has an A-line sleeves and we're going to be creating that A-line sleeves together. Really very simple. Now, the first thing I'm going to do on my pattern paper is mark out a starting line. Like I told you, a guideline is always important and now on my guideline here i'm just going to write down so everybody is saying that this is my starting line which is like a guideline on that starting line i'm going to be marking three inches in like this so this is three inches on my tape i'll mark this in like this from the edge of my pattern paper And still on that starting line, I'm going to be dividing my round armhole by two and marking that on my starting line. Okay, my round armhole divided by two plus one inch. That is nine. I'll mark that still on that starting line. This is just a guideline for us to create our curve. Okay. Now from that point, I marked my nine inches. I'll mark five inches down. Okay five inches down now i always get question like ma why did you mark five inches down all these are just guidelines for us to create that curve on the sleeve this is the easiest way for you to create a sleeve pattern and you don't even need to ask too much okay just follow along and you're going to see the results okay and now i'm just going to use my free hand and make a curve like this see the curve so i use a dotted method first to make a slight curve and i'm just going to go ahead and make the lines visible and this is it okay you can see that the sleeve curve has been created now on the length of my pattern paper i'm just going to mark the same nine inches i marked on the top of my satin line i'll mark it here and like i'm saying or like i've been saying this is all guidelines okay we're going to come back and adjust this pattern to what it is supposed to be okay so i'll connect this and to adjust i am going to go back and calculate my nine inches okay remember i need only nine inches on this pattern because that is my round armhole divided by two plus one inch so i just did that and this is my nine inches i'll indicate that okay so i'm just helping you label everything out so you understand all the things that we've been doing okay so i'll connect the nine inches down to the length like this straight down now it doesn't matter what your pattern looks like right now because we're just using this pattern to create our fleece sleeve okay so we just need this pattern for the fleece sleeves and that is why we're creating a simple pattern for the sleeves okay so i'm gonna cut this out and take off the excess so we can use this pattern now and cut out the actual sleeve for this top which is the a-line sleeves Now this is the sleeve pattern and i'm just going to go ahead and also label everything out okay so we marked three inches here that is three inches in this is like a summary okay and we marked five inches down 
from the nine inches and that is how we're able to get this pattern so now let's go ahead and cut this on the fabric if you have the pattern we created from an old clothes that sleeve pattern bring the sleeve pattern okay this is how you're going to be cutting fold your fabric into two and make sure you're getting an a shape like i am doing right now see the way i'm folding the fabric watch carefully i'm going to fold this like this to get an a shape see i am doing this slowly you can see now i have an a shape on my fabric and the fabric is folded into two I'm going to iron this down because flat is the new bay. Everything needs to lay flat. Okay, so we get the accurate uh, sleeve that we want. So now that I have this, I'm going to bring my pattern. Okay, I'm going to bring my pattern out. And it does not matter which of the pattern you're using. If you're using the sleeve pattern that we've created now or the one we created from the old clothes, bring it. I want you to know something. On the top here of the sleeve, but I'm going to call it the upper part or the center of my sleeve pattern okay so this is the center upper side and this other side is the armhole or the armpit okay here is the armpit so what i'll do is i'll make sure that the center of my sleeve pattern that's the upper side of my sleeve pattern sit on the close edge of my fabric okay this is the close edge after folding my fabric into two and folding it into a shape see the way i'm placing my pattern on the fabric okay i'm making sure that my center upper side of the sleeve sits on that close edge and i'm just going to pin this down now like i said it does not matter if you're using the pattern from the old clothes or this pattern we just created you are doing the same thing just the same thing i just did here that is the same thing you're doing but i'll still show you again i'll still bring in that old pattern the sleeve from the old pattern i'll still bring it in now the next thing we need to do is mark the length of the sleeves okay and to mark the length i'm going to bring my ruler and rule out a straight line here on the top of the pattern here i'm going to rule out a straight line now this straight line is the fact that i need to mark the length of the sleeves and i need it to be equal on the length okay that is why i made this straight line and i'll be marking 24 inches down from that straight line okay and see the way i'm placing my tape it does not matter what you're doing just make sure you place your tape like this and mark your 24 or 25 or 26 the length that you desire for your sleeves make sure you mark that from the top here of the pattern okay or the line i indicated so this line here is the guideline and i'm marking 24 inches down and i'm just trying to achieve an a line sleeves so you see the way i'm moving my tape on the top and on the base making sure that i achieve an a line on the base okay now the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to from here this point here where i have the armpits the beginning of my armpits i'm going to use that line and connect straight down to the length of the sleeves like this okay see the way i'm doing this you see i placed my tape from the armpit i am just marking a line to connect to the base of the sleeves like this so doing this has um, automatically created an a-line shape for my sleeves and i also trace out the curve here the sleeve curve because we need that to connect um the sleeves to the top that's to the um, armhole on our top so yes so i'm going to take off my sleeve pattern and i'll bring the other pattern from the old clothes so this is the sleeve from the old clothes and you see the top here this part here this upper side here sits on the close edge here and the armpit the armpit here sits on this side just the same way we just use the other pattern to create this particular sleeves the same thing you can see it aligns it aligns just the same way the other pattern aligns okay the armpit here creates this line okay the armpit here creates this line let me write it this is the armpit okay the armpit here and here is the upper side which is the center um of the sleeve the upper side of the sleeves sits on the close edge of the fabric here so please do not get confused 
it's just the same process okay so now that we all know this we're going to go ahead and cut out the sleeves please let me know if this is confusing for you okay let me know on the comment section i am available to put you through again So once you are done cutting out the sleeves, make sure that you create another sleeves like this because you need two sleeves for your top. You have the right hand and the left hand and you need your fabrics to be occupying both sides. Okay, so this is the one um, side of the sleeves. That's This is the right side, I guess. So I'll cut out another one to make it right and left. So two sleeves here, all folded into two. And we're going to be sewing this by half an inch but before then not half an inch we're going to be sewing this in but before then we need to calculate what we have on the armhole on the top okay so bring in your top place your tape on the top and calculate what you have on the armhole now whatever you get on the armhole is going to be exactly what you use to sew in your sleeves okay and if you are calculating on the armhole, you find out the armhole is too tight. It's too, it is not up to your round armhole that you have, like your round armhole divided by two. Make sure that you trim to get that measurement, okay, so that this can be able to pass through your hand. So what I calculated on my armhole was 9 inches, but then I added 0 0.5 because of the sewing allowance. So I'll be marking 9.5 inches on this fabric here. And that is what I'll be sewn in by. So the extra is going to be sewn in from the top here to the length. And I'll do this for both sleeves. So you can see that everything I was doing, I was always confirming before I sew. And that is how you should always do anything you're doing. Okay, If you're sewing any piece, skirt, top, dress, whatever it is, always confirm. Confirm and reconfirm. Now, doing this, confirming and reconfirming before you start sewing is just like the very perfect way to sew anything you're sewing, skirt, top, anything, okay? Just make sure that you confirm and then reconfirm before you sew in your piece so you get the actual fit that you're looking for. The next step for us to do is to attach the sleeve to the top and we're done. And we're done. And we're done. Okay, so I have done this. I have attached one side of the sleeves. And I'm just going to put you through how to attach the other side of the sleeves. Okay, my lovelies. Now, what I'll do is, this is the sleeve pattern or the sleeve piece. What am I saying pattern? This is the sleeve piece. So, I'm just aligning it first to see that it's going to match. And yes, girl, it's going to match. Now, what I'll do here is, I'll make sure that the sewing on my sleeves and the sewing on my top, the sides. That sewing that we have, the joining we have on the top and on the sleeves. I'll make sure that those joining are lined like this. You can see my hand i'm making sure that the joining aligns the two joining aligns and that is how i'll start sewing my sleeve to the top okay from that alignment i have made i'll place this on my sewing machine and i'll start sewing this round to attach my sleeve to the top and you're going to see the end result now at this point if you followed the whole process from the beginning to this point you should have given this video more than 10 likes <laughs> if that is possible you should have been giving this video like a lot of likes like like comment you know just just keep saying something on the comment section you should have been doing that since because this is like the very easiest to simplest method you can use to achieve this top and i have given you both options okay so if you cannot do the option one which is creating the pattern from the old clothes you can do the option two okay so no matter what level you are on your sewing journey these both options are the simplest way to follow okay and yes you should have been able to follow the process to create yours let me know if it was possible for you now once i am done attaching my sleeve to the top the last thing to do on this top is to hem all side okay we're going to be folding in the base of the top that's the length and then on the sleeve too we're going to be folding that in to hem so we can have like clean edges and we are done my mind is always looking for the simplest way to create something and i am happy that i was able to bring out two simplest way for you to make this top 
please 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 do not forget to like this video and also let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed the whole process because this is the easiest way like there it cannot get any easier than this trust me like this is the most easiest way for you to sew anything for yourself creating it from an old clothes or marking your body measurement just the way i have stated them out okay so be waiting to see your comments on the comment section i can't wait to see the next thing that i will be coming up next week and i hope that you like my next project so love and light to you once more bye for now